Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Gervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon, and should be early masterpieces of microwave electronics, the blackest of black arts in analog electronics. So far we have worked on the two main microwave boxes we got from Steve, the transponder and the amplifier. But the unified S-band system is quite extensive, and a bunch of other boxes are needed to encode and decode the signals carried by the microwave front end. And thanks to Marcel, we actually have many of them, which should keep us entertained for a while as we figure them all out and make them work again. Most of them are from the Apollo command module and well documented, but one of them is particularly mysterious. As Marcel told the story from when he bought it, he first spotted the disassembled chassis at a recycler and recognized it as probably an Apollo ground service equipment box. It had already been gutted and had no cards in it, unfortunately. But a bunch of modules were strewn about the floor and he realized quickly that they might belong to the box. He picked them all up and here we are, a mystery box with cut wires and a bunch of modules that we don't know in which slot they go, and on which we have zero documentation. However, we have an inkling of what it is. It says update a link on it. The command system to remote control the spacecraft and the guidance computer was called the update a link or UDL using phase shift keying modulation, or PSK. All the legends do match. So this is probably the box that tested sending coded commands to the spacecraft, and the command code would have been displayed in the front. What to save, Marcel, what to save. Ken, you have been working on a mystery box mm, yes. from Marcel. Marcel, you're hiding. It's your box. The work from is the scrappers. Yeah. I'm trying to reverse engineer this box, but it's a mass of white wires that go everywhere. I have figured out that the display is being driven in octal, and I figured out part of the PSK circuitry. Um, but most of what happens, there's a paper tape reader. It's getting messages somehow. It's comparing them. Yeah. So we're going to power it on and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. But it is, what, what's the name of the box, right? It's it's a it's update a link confidence test. So we figured out that this was the probably the box that gave commands to the command module. So the update a link lets ground switch some relays in the command module or send commands directly to the Apollo guidance computer. Right. And then we also know that they didn't send commands in the blind, they sent commands and then right at the transmitter they received them and made sure they had sent the right thing and there's a whole bunch of buttons that uh, seem to compare what has been sent to what should have been sent right um, and then we also know that they didn't send bit by bit but they div each bit is split into sub bits so yeah they used i think five bits to, to transmit one bit so you could detect corruption, and those were called the sub bits. Right, and, and then this yeah. will spoil them. And then we think the bits come out from the paper tape, which is why we brought our trusty ASR ASR thirty three. And then we know the indicators work because you had a few of them uh, lighting up directly. Yes, it looks like we have certain glorious edge eliminated number indicators. Fran Blanche made an episode on them. I'll put a link somewhere. They work with regular light bulbs, edge illuminating panes of transparent plastic with numbers engraved on them that diffuse the light. Sort of a low voltage, though higher power consumption version of a Nixie tube. So, well, let me make a, a, a little punch tape, or you want to make one? Okay, what should I just... You just punch it. Oh wait, I guess it should have been octal, oh well. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so we, we have the tape and then we do break and that will fit it out. And it's 
going to be our trial tape. There you go. So this is going to be our, our tape. Um, do you want? Can you take one module out because you were able to um, get a few of them reverse engineered? It's quite interesting how this thing is constructed. So here you go. So e each of these these modules has a, a function name on it. Phase detector LP flip flop. This I've reverse engineered as a JK flip flop. So the different modules have different functions. They're hybrid modules with transistors and resistors and stuff in an epoxy block. Can, can you remove one? Because they are, sure. They are, they are the they are the before the IC, right? You made yeah. modules with all transistors in there. And they have th um, 13 oh, pins. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not focused yet. The pin spacing is 0.2 inches. You can plug these into a breadboard. It works just fine. So I've done that for some testing. So you got a flip-flop to work. You got a gate to work. I, I got an emitter follower to work. There's a, a sum block here that I thought would sum the inputs, but it does weird stuff and I can't figure out what's going on. Right, and a phase modulator, and that seems to be quite okay because the box generated uh, phase modulation on the signal. Very low bit rate, 200 bits per second, uh, because it's one kilobit per second, but divided in five sub bits. So it's 200 bit per second on the way up, and the, and the box is missing all kind of stuff, right? It it the, it has a uh, a board missing here. So th th this board apparently had some inductors and a resistor and a mystery module that have been cut out of it. Right, uh, and also the power supplies were all missing there were plenty of cables cut kind of figured it out and rewired it with what we think is the right power supply there's some yeah that was the 400 it was powered by 400 volts three phase originally but no more uh, so uh, conveniently it told us what the voltages were because there are test points in the front so, so this was a big help for figuring out what the voltages are 28.6 gram minus 6. There's lots of test points. So w when the module is plugged into the box, you can't access the, the circuitry, but they've wired up these test points to important signals, which makes it very easy to test this. If you know what the test points are, you can just stick a probe into the hole and find out all the important signals on the board. And so at this point, we think it's generates somehow the PSK code and can read the PSK code. Okay, while well we power it up and see if it lights up. I'm going to do plus six. Oh, woohoo! KK, um, plus six drop to three volts. Yeah, that's what I thought that it would. Okay, perfect. This is why I don't like this annoying power supply. All right. All right. Which one? The plus six volts. Yeah. Oh, we got digits. Oh, oh. We got zeros. <laughs> Do you have six volts? Four and a half. Keep oh, going. I have two amps. I'm at the max of this power seven. supply. Yeah. Okay. So I need a more powerful power supply. Yeah. This is just not good enough. Okay, we have the better power supplies. Ooh. Okay. Quite a few amps. This one. Five point seven. And this one. This one is relatively low current. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did it come up? Wait, let me grab my camera. Oh, it did come up. But oh, we're in 400. Okay, let's clear it. Yeah. <laughs> tape stop. So it has a problem with the tape. There's all the buttons. There we can turn. It did oh, sub bit of green. Got green. Okay, can't read the tape. So that's probably your first thing to figure out how the tape works. Um. Can we reset it? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, 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 yeah, are you, are you good? Do the plus six here. Yeah. Okay, plus six off. Woohoo! <laughs> it's something else. Well, it doesn't have the tape error anymore. Oh, maybe it needs the minus six first. It looks like we're missing two digits. Are they missing or burned out? Um, we don't know. Well, each digit is a separate light bulb. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after some uh, disassembly from the tape drive, right? Wire. Was the wire broken? Suspiciously empty pin. 
Yeah. <laughs> suspicious for the tea pit. It's very suspicious. Goes to the yellow wire, and there happens to be a yellow wire down here. Which is our name. Sold by the driver. Okay, so that would explain uh, at least for sure it cannot work without that wire. So that's the wire that drive the whole thing is broken. So while Ken was doing the difficult electronic reverse engineering, I took care of the tape reader, which was uh, frozen and bent. It must have taken a blow. But fortunately, I was able to free and readjust it so the transport started to work, at least when the coil was driven directly. Oh, look, smooth. But even with the repaired wire and the freed up mechanism, our tape still didn't budge. It looked like the electromagnet was energized all the time. We soon figured out why though. The relay here is driven by, by high current pulses that make it, make it click. And those pulses, I traced it to this mercury relay here. Yeah. This is a mercury wetted relay that can handle high current inductive loads. And if you come from this angle, you can see the mercury relay has an arrow labeled up. Yeah, it only, it only works if it, with gravity in the right direction. Up mm -hmm. arrow is currently pointing sideways, so the mercury is probably shorting it out, and that's why the, the solenoid was stuck on. So we just need to put this back in its regular position, and hopefully... Hey, and Eric, uh, in the frame I have your your tape reader because we figured out this is a tally tape reader and Eric has a tally tape reader and be be between uh, all of us Marcel you me uh, <laughs> and Steve Jurison I think we have everything yeah so the mechanism of this tape reader is the same on the front see that looks the same to me basically the same however if we flip it around the back is very, very different. And thanks to Eric having recognized the type of tape reader head this was, it allowed me to get the adjustment manual for this mechanism, which was critical. The drive mechanism is very different though, as his reader is much faster. This mechanism uses a 1 12th horsepower motor. It's very fast. <laughs> but you know why this one is slow speed, right? Because the link is 200 bits per second. Right, so, so you don't so need it to be fast. Oh, actually, you don't want it to be fast. That would be a problem. You would need memory. Uh, can we make it work, you think? Uh, we can, yeah. So I... Yes! Yes! Oh, that's a super fast one. So here is our experimental setup. We've put the relay that way up. We elected to do that rather than flip the box because we want to be able to probe and we have the reader with the tape and we have a few control points cleverly chosen by Ken so this should be the three bit octal value that we read off the tape and this um, is a clock maybe yeah we hope for we, ho we want to find a clock I want to find one which I, I would think is one kilohertz, right? Or two kilohertz, something that's related to the to yeah. the modulation rate. We're getting nothing on the... Oh, there we go. Oh, we've got nice numbers. All our digits are oh, oh, oh. This is pretty. Let me probe this. Can you tell me if you see anything interesting? This is zero. One. Zero. Ah, yes! So what's our clock frequency? 100 kilohertz. 100, 100 kilohertz. That's a lot higher than I expected it to be. And then we have one digit missing. But we saw them all work. Yeah, yeah so it could be a burnt out bulb. Yeah. So I, I want to see one kilohertz. I want to see, but you must have the sub bits. I don't know anywhere else obvious that would have a different clock. You want to try to read some... Uh, so should we flip some switches, see what happens? Okay, clear did nothing. Oh, 
Wait, uh, 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 I cleared a happen. digit. Right. And it looks like our broken digit is now working. Okay, well that is less than I was expecting. I, I still think you need to put the one kilohertz somewhere. Um, well, why don't we at least try advancing the paper tape and see if see if it's reading? That's zero 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 one two, two three. Wait, wait, the blue one moved as well. But maybe just a bit. Oh no, it did. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's. I have a bad contact on the blue, the, the blue, uh, the blue bit. Okay, so it's reading it, but we can't make it advance. So we've made progress. Uh, it didn't do anything last time, but we thought we were probably missing a clock somewhere. And Ken, you think you found probably or so, a so candidate? So I've been doing some tracing out of the circuitry, and I believe this is the board that generates the phase shift key signal. Um, which is a one kilohertz um, signal that changes phase for a zero or one bit. And tracing out the schematic, I found that it's driven by two flip-flops, which are dividing down an input signal. So I assume it's going to be four kilohertz comes in, gets divided to two kilohertz, and gets divided to the one kilohertz to generate the PSK signal. So the question is, where, where does that clock come from? And it comes from this board, and you'll notice there's some components missing. Oh, and, and there was a, a component here which um, was labeled MP1. I don't know MP. Missing package one. <laughs> so it takes power and ground, and then has one signal out, which is probably the clock. So it's probably some sort of a quartz oscillator. Right. So we're going to simulate that oscillator with the HP function generator here. Yes. Ha! Ah, no wonder we couldn't find our clock that came from a part of the machine that had been removed. And thanks to Ken's incredible reverse engineering skills, remember none of these pseudo-integrated circuits are documented. We now know it needs 4 kHz and where to put it. That's the missing one where the, your LP components and MP no, your MP components would be, you think? Y yeah, those components were probably too big and came up off the circuit board so they couldn't put a card in this spot. And they were <coughs> you can see the same effect on this, the green monolith on the end. So we're not missing anything here. This is the transformer for the op-amp power supply. Okay. But we're missing some power supplies and some and an amplifier that were mounted on the back. Right, but we have taken partially care of that. Okay, let's try it. And before we go try that, I should mention that Master Ken also figured out how the tape is encoded and how it loads the digits. The, the paper tape um, reader here, I traced the wires through to this board. I reverse engineered the modules and circuitry in this board and discovered that the format is um, three bits of data, an octal digit, um, the, those same three bits inverted for error checking, and then two command bits. So oh, the paper tape good. reader um, reads, reads a row from the paper tape into this uh, module. Th this module has um, error checking to make sure that the three bits and the three inverted bits match. It loads it into a shift register and then sends it to one of the display digits. So each time you read a row from the paper tape, it will read in another digit, and we believe it will shift them into the into the display. So yeah, we're hoping to see that work. A, a command message was a ten-digit octal message, and I think we have ten digits right here with the ship address, vehicle address, then the type of command, then the rest of the data. So it just matches what the command message is. Mm -hmm. And that is, it says here, message number. My, my theory is that the message oh, number is going to have to be on the paper tape as well. Oh, you think the message number has to be on the tape? Um, yeah, all, all these digits are equivalent as far as the circuitry. Okay. So, so I think... Okay, so I need, I need to change my tape format. 
Okay, let's see if we can redo it on the video. We just got life out of the thing. Um, and this is just with our 4 kilohertz in, we got something to read. How do you do that? You did clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1 to 0. Program start? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And take a break. Aha! I think we just read our tape, so that was... We were about right, right? That we were missing the 4 kilohertz. Cool, and... It's not happy with what's on the tape. Uh, I don't know why, but that's... It got something in. We have all the digits active, that's nice. Uh, okay, well now we can go to the next step and figure out what it's reading and what it wants. Haha. Uh -huh. Making progress. We think we have seen a phase shift. Um, go for it, Ken. Okay, let me load the paper tape back in. Clear tape start. Okay, I got a few. So here's, it, it happens repeatedly, but here is one. If you look at the waveform on the green, which is the one that comes out, you have one that's half half a shift smaller than this one and you can see a controlling bit here just eats half of a period and then the whole thing is has been shifted so it's eating data and creating it um, but we're still missing some pieces of the puzzle but it's getting there we have data we were having actually read errors on the tape and it's because it the tape reader was not properly adjusted. Uh, so I made a test tape of alternate patterns which you need to adjust the contacts. This is star and U in ASCII, by the way. Equivalent of RY, RY in Bodo, no, no, no signal. And I think it corresponds to five and two on the device. And by the way, uh, Ken, you got us our, all of our zeros back, right? Yep, replaced a few bad light bulbs. It all works, and so if I did it right, the hope is that it goes 525252. Okay, but then it's clear. I have my 5252525252, so the state no is read properly. Try again. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the uh, seven, 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 seven is where the lead, lead in of the tape. So this read was good. So this is my new, my newest tape, and you can see I have a whole bunch of co commands. Uh, one that's all zeros, one that's all one, one that's all twos, etc. So you have three bits that's zeros, the anti bits for checking and the start of the sequence, then thirteen numbers. This is one. And same thing at the start. You have to, uh, you, have, you have the one, you have the anti one, and then you have the start of the sequence. This is two, same sequence. This is three. This is four, five, six, seven. And it worked fine for about two minutes, and then we ran in trouble. Let me demonstrate. I think tape advance here. So that's, oh, now it works. That's my bunch of zeros, command made out of zeros. Command made of one, it almost works except the last digit. So just wiggling the modules around. So we had a problem where we, we um, this is a whole shift register and we kind of lost it in the middle of the shift register. But it works again, huh? And then we swapped the mod modules to move the problem to the end so we could track where the problem was. Okay, let's see if I, Two, okay. Three, four, five, six, seven. It works except for the first digit, but that might be related to the way I'm doing the command. We we mm. saw that before, right? Mm -hmm. Six, seven, yeah. No more tape errors, and that that's a tape error because it read the 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 end, right? Which has nothing on it, and it's all sevens. So progress! What is the achievement of the D? Applause! <laughs> 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 Alright. 
So we are far from done with this box, which has still bits missing that we need to reinvent. But we started from a completely unknown box and got to reading in tape commands thanks to the impressive reverse engineering work of Master Ken. And kudos to Marcel for having spotted the box and prevented its destruction. In the meantime, Mike has acquired some new documentation that shows how our updata box was hooked in the test setup and Ken has built an automatic sniffer card to map out the backplane. So we'll come back to it in future episodes and hopefully send a successful command to our spacecraft in the not too distant future. <laughs>